Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The United Nations has been condemned for blacklisting companies doing business in Israel. Nikki Haley skewers Mahmoud Abbas at a UN Security Council meeting. And North Korea proudly displays their captured USS Pueblo as a war trophy. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. The United Nations is now being condemned because they are blacklisting companies who do business in Israel. That's how anti-Semitic they have become. Fox News reports that a report by the UN, UN's Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights last Wednesday, which seeks to make a database of companies doing business in Israeli settlements, was roundly condemned in a statement from United States Ambassador to the UN, Nikki Haley, who said that this report blacklisting companies who do business in Israel is, quote, the latest anti-Israeli actions taken by the Human Rights Council. This whole issue of outs is outside the bounds of the High Commissioner for Human Rights Office's mandate and is a waste of time and resources, end quote. Nikki Haley's statement said that the report was yet another example of the council's anti-Israel obsession. Haley noted that, quote, the more the so-called Human Rights Council does this, the less effective it becomes as an advocate against the world's human rights abusers. The United States will continue to aggressively push back against the anti-Israel bias and advance badly needed reforms of the council, end quote. Meanwhile, Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Dannon, out and called it a blacklist. In a statement before his speech to the UN, marking the victims of the Holocaust, Dannon slammed the announcement. He said, quote, on the day that the United Nations is marking International Holocaust Remembrance Day, the UN Human Rights Council has chosen to publicize this information about the number of companies operating in Israel. This is a shameful act, which will serve as a stain on the UN Human Rights Council forever. We will continue to act with our allies and use all the means at our disposal to stop the publication of this disgraceful blacklist, end quote. Obviously concerned about countries boycotting the pro-Israel companies, and rightly so. Speaking later on at the UN General Assembly, Holocaust Remembrance event, he said that the blacklist goes back to centuries old anti-Semitic boycotts. He continued, quote, the information published today by the Human Rights Council is more of the same. The Human Rights Council will now join history's infamous list of anti-Semites and bigots who ultimately failed in their attempts to devastate the Jewish people, end quote. And that's the news. Our thanks to Fox News for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, you have UN bureaucrats who are siding with probably Muslim activists who want to kick Jews out of Israel and stop them from building peaceful homes and doing peaceful business in Israel. You know the land that God gave to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Joshua and on and on and on. Uh, but now they have it back again. Since 1948, Israel has been a nation and 
Those are just the human actors. There's some anti-Jews and there's some Jews in the story. Where are the spirits? How do you discern the spirit of God and the demonic spirit of anti-Semitism? Well, you look at the morality of the human actors involved. And thank God for Nikki Haley. She is listening to the spirit of God and so is President Trump who's giving her top cover to do this. And she is calling out the evil of anti-Semitism and the evil of these anti-Jewish boycotts. Now, the ones who would boycott Israel and say, oh, if you, if you do business in Israel, we're gonna boycott your products. They are listening to a demonic spirit of anti-Semitism and hatred. And they're hating people just because of their religion or heritage or locality. Just because they happen to be in Israel and Jewish at the same time means that they don't deserve your business. Well, if you think that way, maybe you have a demonic spirit of anti-Semitism. And the Bible condemns people who think that way. In fact, God warns you and God warns us in Joel chapter three, that God says he will gather all the nations and he will bring them down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat and there God will enter into judgment against them because God will defend the account of his people Israel. My heritage Israel, says God, whom they have scattered among the nations, they've also divided up my land. God will enter judgment against the anti-Semites. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name for the United Nations to stop hating Israel and for all the nations of the world who are gathered there to repent and to honor their creator, the same creator who spoke to Abraham, who spoke to Moses, who spoke to Joshua and ultimately manifest through Jesus Christ to claim Jerusalem as his chosen city that we cannot divide. The nations of the world may gather against her, but God and Israel will prevail. God make it so in Jesus name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Nikki Haley also skewers Mahmoud Abbas at the Security Council. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today I want to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. I even demanded my own misdemeanor court-martial, and finally Congress agreed with me and reversed the bad Navy policy. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign that petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. By becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website 
schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg It's time to take back your country. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from Fox News, who reports that Nikki Haley, the United Nations ambassador from the U.S., is now skewering Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian Authority leader, at a recent UN Security Council meeting. U.S. Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley launched a broadside attack Thursday at Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, accusing him of indulging in outrageous conspiracy theories about Israel and lacking what is needed to secure peace in the region. Haley made these remarks at a meeting of the UN Security Council on the Middle East. She pointedly contrasted Abbas with other more moderate leaders like the late Egyptian President Anwar Sadat, whom she cited as a leader willing to step forward and acknowledge hard truths and make compromises. Remember Sadat led the Egyptian peace deal with Jimmy Carter and with the Israeli leaders of his day back in the 70s. But Nikki Haley asked, quote, where is the Palestinian version of Anwar Sadat, end quote. She cited a speech earlier this month in which Mahmoud Abbas, the anti-Semite who is now leading the Palestinian Authority, tore into Israel and the United States. And in his speech, he rejected any American role in future peace talks. According to the New York Times, Abbas said, quote, we will not accept for the U.S. to be a mediator because after they have done this to us, a believer shall not be stung twice in the same place, end quote. Of course, he's referring to himself as a believer in Allah, and I think he's quoting from Muhammad and the Quran. But responding to U.S. threats to pull funding from the Palestinian Authority, you know, it's not like we're obligated to give them money in the first place. We've been giving them a lot of money, but if we ever stop that, he says, damn your money. Well, to that, Nikki Haley replied, quote, he rejected any American role in peace talks. He insulted the American president. He called for a suspended recognition of Israel. He invoked an ugly and fictional past reaching all the way back to the 17th century to paint Israel as a colonialist project engineered by European powers. Well, that's a speech that indulges in outrageous and discredited conspiracy theories. And it's not the speech of a person with the courage and will to seek real peace, end quote. Nikki Haley continued that while the US was eager to pursue peace, quote, we will not chase after a Palestinian leadership that lacks what's needed to achieve peace, end quote. At the session, Palestinian ambassador Riyad Mansour attacked the decision by the United States to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's eternal capital and attacked even the decision by President Trump to move the American embassy there. He said, no, 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 that's null and void. And that's the news. Our thanks to Fox News for that report. And we discern upon you, Nikki Haley, the spirit of Almighty God. You know, it's kind of funny, at the end of that, the Palestinian Authority ambassador to the UN, he just kind of said, oh, Trump's decision to move the embassy is null and void. Does that mean it's not gonna be moved? No. It's not null and void, it's still gonna move. <laughs> I think President Trump has made that decision without you, Mr. Palestinian ambassador, and your vote is not gonna count when the United States Marines protect the gates of the new US Embassy in Jerusalem. And if you wanna take on the Marines, you can call them null and void, but that embassy is gonna be secure. And it's gonna be in one place. And by the way, I think up now up to 11 other nations are following Trump's lead and moving their embassies to Jerusalem. Why? 
because that is where the capital is. That's where the Knesset meets. That's where the prime minister, it, why would you have an, an embassy in any other city than where the ambassador is going to be meeting with legislative leaders? Of course it should be in Jerusalem, politically, not just religiously. Now, if you wanna quote the Bible, God gave, is, gave Jerusalem to King David and, and opened the city and built the uh, t temple twice, to, maybe a third time coming up. That temple is the inhabitation of God's presence, or at least it was back in the day of course, now God dwells in his people, the church of Jesus Christ all over the world. And as Christians, we support Israeli sovereignty over their own capital, especially Jerusalem. North, south, east, and west Jerusalem. That entire city is, and so is uh, Judea and Samaria, what some people call the West Bank. You know, God gave that land, not only all the way to the Jordan litter, uh, River, but all the way beyond. And the Palestinians have their territory, it's called Jordan. There's an entire nation, which was decided by the UN back in the day, to host the Palestinian people. They already have their own nation. It's called Jordan. And we recognize their sovereignty to host the Palestinian people. The Bible says this in Psalm 122, verse six, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Let's pray. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the Palestinian people to have their own homeland in Jordan where the UN has set them up many, many years ago. And Father, we pray for the Jewish people to have their own homeland, which includes Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. And Father, we pray that the church of Jesus Christ would extend to the uttermost parts of the earth, and that as the church, we would assemble to support our friend Israel and support their sovereignty over their own territory and give them favor at the United Nations and stop the anti-Semitic persecution in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take another short break. When we come back, North Korea is displaying the USS Pueblo. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also face punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story today also comes from Fox News. And it's a reminder to us during this time of the Olympics, which the Winter Olympics are about to happen here in South Korea, that the old enemies of peace in North Korea are still displaying a captured United States warship, the USS Pueblo, as a war trophy from the 1950s. Fox News reports that this week marks the 50th anniversary of when the USS Pueblo was captured by North Korea. In 1968, in the Hermit Kingdom, they are now bragging about this and seizing upon the opportunity to aggrandize their one-time sad victory over the U US Navy when they captured an American warship 
And now they still today display that ship as a trophy against Washington amidst escalating political tensions today. The ship has become a spectacle in the frozen Pothong River on the outskirts of the victorious Fatherland Liberation War Museum. That's a complex in central Pyongyang where thousands of North Koreans learn about, about their country's version of history and how despite the odds it was able to defeat the Americans in the Korean War. Well, that's not true, but they did claim one trophy. The USS Pueblo is the one and only United States ship ever held captive by a foreign government. And while its crew members were released after uh, much torture, that ship is still being held. And it's still, by the way, under commission in the United States Naval Vessel Register. They have our property. And the North Korean state-run media are bragging about this. They're claiming that they captured this ship and that they're trying, now the US is trying to disrupt North-South relations heading into next month's Winter Olympics. But the date was January 23rd, 50 years ago this last month, in 1968, when the USS Pueblo tried to evade a North Korean submarine chaser, but was eventually captured. And another submarine chaser, two, excuse me, four torpedo boats and two MiG-21 fighter jets joined the scene. So the Americans were surrounded by two subs, four torpedo boats threatening to sink her and instead they surrendered. One crew member did lose his life in the pursuit of the ship, was peppered with gunfire and eventually boarded. An event that Americans assist took place in international waters, not North Korean waters. By the way, the 82 surviving sailors were taken prisoner and held captive in two different camps. They were held for almost a year, 335 days held prisoner. North Korea claims that the ship entered its territorial waters before it was attacked. Many of the men were crippled, malnourished, and almost blind from the treatment they received from their captors. And the US government, unfortunately, did not recognize the American crew's sacrifice until 1989. And then finally, did grant them prisoner of war medals. And that's the news. Our thanks to Fox News for remembering the heroes, not only of the Korean War of the 1950s, as I started, but the Cold War that continued thereafter. And even today, I know the Cold War with the Soviet Union has fallen. That stopped in 1989. But uh, now, even though the Berlin Wall came down in 89, the Soviet Empire came down in 91, there is still today a North Korean Cold War. And Kim Jong-un, the son of Kim Jong-il, the son of Kim Il-sung, the Kim dynasty, grandfather and now father and now son, leading the charge against American interests and threatening the security. Who knows, let's pray that we have a peaceful Olympic games, but I think there will be a day coming soon when the United States takes back that ship, USS Pueblo. And won't that be a glorious day? You know, in Colorado in the legislature where I served as a state representative, they bring a resolution every year to honor the sailors. I've met some of the sailors. To remember the tragedy. We show pictures of that ship on the wall in the Colorado State House. And we pray for the peaceful resolution of that entire crisis. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 13, remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated since you yourselves are in the body also. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do remember the prisoners of war or the missing in action or the killed in action, those who died, but especially those who survived and some, in some places, were never recovered. God knows if they're still being held. 
But Father, we, we don't forget. We never forget those who have sacrificed their freedom so that we could have freedom. Those who live in chains so that we can walk around free. Father, they have given everything so that we may have everything. We pray that as free people, we remember and honor their sacrifice. We pray that you comfort them in their time of distress. We remember the MIAs and POWs in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. You know, people ask me, Chaps, we're watching on this network. We've already set our DVR to record your shows, but our friends don't have this network or maybe they can't watch at this time. Did you know we are on demand on 10 different platforms? You can tell your friends to find this show, PIJN News, on their Roku box or their Amazon Fire box. Just look under the religion or news categories. Or maybe you have a smartphone or your friends or grandchildren can find us on Android TV, Google TV, Smart TV, or iTunes. Of course, we're always on the internet. Look for us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, or better yet, subscribe to our daily email alerts at PrayInJesusName.org. It's important that you share all of these available platforms with your friends so we can mobilize all of the body of Christ to pray the news and change the world. Would you join us? Visit PrayInJesusName.org to learn more. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. Thank you for watching. I hope you're inspired by some of the stories that we bring you. Stories about the United Nations, about Israel, stories about North Korea, foreign affairs. Uh, you know, my undergrad degree is in international affairs. Uh, I have such a good time bringing you a thoughtful analysis of the news. Would you please donate to our show today? I don't get paid from this. Your donations go straight to our nonprofit to help us buy airtime to stay on this channel. Please visit PrayInJesusName.org and give your best donation today. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 29, then the people rejoiced for they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart, they had offered willingly to the Lord. And King David also rejoiced. God bless you in Jesus' name. If you need prayer, call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.